We have a live case from Italy now. Hello, good morning, uh, India Live uh, from uh, Novara, Italy. And uh, we are here uh, to show you a case of uh, erectile dysfunction that we uh, currently treat in uh, our hospital uh, almost uh, every day. Uh, with me, there is uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Ricardo Iorio, who is a friend Hello. and uh, a co worker. And uh, here in Italy, it's uh, Sunday morning, and so I really wish to thanks all the cat lab staff and nurses that have been uh, you know so patient uh, uh, to come on sunday uh, to work uh, with you guys uh, and in their lives okay if we can start uh, the slides uh, we will show you the uh, clinical history guido thanks a lot okay prossima yeah, you know, I mean, uh, in, in India, we thought, you know, we can, we can joke about uh, this type of uh, pathology, but you have to keep in mind that, you know, more than uh, uh, 3 million in Italy and 300 million in the world are affected by this pathology. Guido Prossima. Uh, this is a young uh, man, as you can see, uh, with no cardiovascular risk factors except for uh, uh, smoking, uh, but uh, he withdrew smoking approximately uh, 15 years ago. Uh, he had uh, only positive clinical history for a saphenectomy that was done in the left leg in uh, 2016. And uh, he started to complain about erectile dysfunction four years ago. Uh, of course, as a natural history of this disease, the patient uh, usually uh, start to have some problems. He goes to urologist, and then the urologist send the patient to cardiologist to see if they can give uh, a PDA5 inhibitors uh, to improve the erectile dysfunction uh, symptoms. Uh, having said that, he was uh, seen by a neurologist, if I can have the slide back, uh, uh, three times and uh, then referred to me. Uh, the urologist performed, as usual, a dynamic Doppler. Can we have this, the other slide, Guido? Next. You see, the patient uh, uh, performed uh, in 2016, 2019, and 2020 dynamic penile Doppler, which is usually done uh, by Caverject injection, usually 10 or 20 milligrams. And you see that the systolic peak velocity in uh, this uh, young guy on the right pudendal artery it's uh, 19 centimeter per second with a resistant index of less than 0 0.7 and the left to handle 20 centimeter per second uh, with a resistant index again of less than 0 0.7. Of course, the uh, urologists have suspected a fibrosis of the corpora cavernosa at the Doppler examination. What I can tell you from my standpoint is that uh, there is some hemodynamic compromise, but it not seems to be so severe. Uh, we interrogated the patient. There is a questionnaire which is called IEF, International Index of uh, Erectile Function Score, that goes from zero to 15. We give five questions usually to the patients, and of course, zero to five is a severe, uh, 5 to 10, it's moderate, and 10 to 15, it's light erectile dysfunction. Uh, the patient has, as a score, 5. So, uh, clinically speaking, he has a severe erectile dysfunction. 
which does not respond anymore to phosphodiesterases inhibitors is on Taldalafil uh, with no response with, uh, for more than one year. Can I have uh, again uh, the uh, slides? So what uh, we did due to the fact that <coughs> the patient arrived uh, for this uh, uh, live case on uh, Friday, we did an hormonal uh, um, uh, laboratory test analysis and you can clearly see that you know all the hormones are quite normal. He has 6.2 LH, the free testosterone is 10.3, it's slightly increased compared to normal. The free sex hormone binding protein is uh, 60, which is again slightly increased compared to the normal, but nothing really that we can, uh, you know, justify this severe IF. Possiamo andare avanti con la prossima diapositiva. Of course, uh, what you can do in the screening of these patients is to do a CT scan angiography. And you can clearly see the right pudendal artery. This was done yesterday uh, afternoon. The right pudendal artery and the left pudendal artery looks quite normal. Uh, this is a voxel gradient uh, reconstruction uh, on the right panel. So uh, basically, of course, due to the fact that uh, the case uh, was not organized, uh, this is a you know, true word. Uh, next slide. Uh, what, Guido, uh, prossima uh, diapositiva. As you know, there are several zones where you can identify atherosclerotic disease in a CT scan. Uh, usually the atherosclerotic disease uh, in the majority of cases is localized in zone 4B, 5A and 5B. So mid part of the uh, internal pudendal artery and distal part as a zone 5A and zone 5B, so as a common penile artery and dorsalis penis. Prossima diapositiva, Guido, grazie. So basically, uh, the idea is uh, as a first line treatment in this type of patient when you have an IF score which should be less than 15 points, penile doppler which is positive uh, as in this case, and of course, uh, positive penile angio CT, if the patient does not respond to PDF5 inhibitors, then second line therapy for atherosclerosis is to do a uh, um, plain balloon angioplasty followed by drug eluting balloon treatment of the pudendal artery. Then of course there is also a venous part, which uh, you know it's also important due to the fact that uh, you have to think about a, a, a car tire. If you have a leak in the tire, you can put uh, ma as many airs that you want, but the tire will not inflate. So also the venous parts needs to be uh, good. Uh, but in this case, it doesn't seem that uh, he has a, a venous leakage due to the fact that the index resistance is uh, 0 0.7, normal it's 0 0.8. So, uh, of course, uh, for uh, demonstration, uh, we will uh, perform with you a diagnostic evaluation. We know for sure that the artery are not disease, but what is in important that I would like to show you the projection that you have to utilize in order to evaluate these patients. The diagnostic part is quite complex due to the anatomical variables and the problems that you can encounter in selecting the pudendal arteries. And uh, last but not least, we will uh, give you a glimpse on a CO2 angiography, uh, which we utilize uh, every day to evaluate the fibrosis of the uh, corpora cavernosa due to the fact that CO2 diffusion is much, much higher compared to contrast media. And so you will rarely see a corpora cavernosa during contrast injection. You can clearly see corpora cavernosa with CO2. And of course, if you don't see 
the corpora cavernosa with CO2 injection, you will immediately uh, think that there is a problem at the level of the corpora cavernosa, uh, such as uh, microcirculation uh, uh, disturbance uh, and, uh, of course, fibrosis of the uh, corpora cavernosa itself. Now, if uh, Vincenzo can uh, uh, show... Yes, do you have questions? Uh, yeah, no, I just wanted to remind you that we have only 30 minutes yeah. and we already finished 12 of them. Yeah, yeah, so, we, will move, uh, we will move to the uh, diagnostic part that we have done on the uh, left pudendal artery. Uh, if I can have the registration that uh, we have done, of course, we start with uh, a normal uh, angiography of the uh, Carrefour. You can clearly see the two hypogastric arteries here that are normal. Then we move in crossover and uh, we check uh, with uh, different oblique projections the origin of the hypogastric arteries. Of course, now we are uh, selectively engaged here in the uh, hypogastric space can, uh, and uh, we are moving to the uh, diagnostic projection. Uh, you can clearly see the pudendal artery is the artery that runs on the uh, right side of the screen and that makes a small curvature uh, going uh, in the middle part uh, of uh, uh, the patient. Uh, if I can have the next slides with other projections, uh, you will uh, uh, see that moving from uh, uh, oblique uh, projection caudal, which is uh, this one, and you can clearly see the uh, pudendal artery uh, on the... Can, can, can I go back, uh, Vincenzo, one second, so I can show, okay. Uh, again, this is the pudendal, it's the artery that crosses uh, the screen and that distribute uh, in the middle of the screen itself. You have the common penile artery as a last part and in the dorsal penile artery that you slightly see going uh, uh, in the uh, mid part of the screen. Now I want to show you the uh, CO2 angiography, uh, which is uh, again this uh, frame that we currently do. As you see the you know, distribution of the gas uh, is... Uh, can we go to the next slide so we can show the India Life friends uh, the, the complete angiography? You can clearly see, first of all, you know, with one angio, you have also the left pudendal artery that you clearly see on the left with the distribution. But if we, if we keep the CO2, uh, we will see the uh, distribution on the cavernous body here in the last frames. You can clearly see a small distribution of uh, the CO2 on the cavernous body. I'm telling you that this is a, not a normal distribution due to the fact that when you do have a, a normal distribution, you have an explosion of uh, CO2 within the corpora cavernosus. Now we will uh, perform the contralateral uh, injection just to evaluate also the <coughs> cavernous body. We are uh, utilizing a mammary, left mammary artery in order to uh, engage, to so selectively engage the contralateral artery. This is the left mammary artery. And of course, we were gonna move on the contralateral side to evaluate where the origin of the hypogastric artery is. We are on the iliac. Ricardo, can you inject one second? Can we increase a little bit more, uh, Lorenzo? Mi metti 5 5, per favore. We are, uh, so selective injection, we usually give 3 cc's, while for uh, iliac, we move up to 5 or 7 injection. Okay, here is the hypogastric artery that we 
selectively engage. Can you check? Okay, we are at the origin. Now we move with that Rumo wire, of course, to engage more deep the artery and then perform with you a diagnostic angiography. As I told you, the most difficult part, especially at the beginning, is to understand who is who, because there are several arteries originating from the hypogastric, which are mainly the gluteal arteries, inferior and uh, uh, superior, or uh, internal or external, as you wish. We are probably here in a gluteal. There are branches for bladder, there are branches for obturatory uh, vessel. We are, you know, with the push and pull technique, moving inside the gluteal artery and usually we start from there, the uh, diagnostic part. So we have utilized the contralateral uh, view, now we move to the homolateral view. We usually start with an AP uh, to understand where the pudendal artery is, Lorenzo 55, and uh, as uh, you will see, the pudendal artery runs around the bladder, okay? Here it is, it's the big branch that uh, you see here on the left that makes the curve around the bladder and distribute in the middle part. Then we move usually to the uh, caudal homolateral view, so we are working here on the right, so we move to the caudal right to open a little bit more the artery. Lorenzo, go. And here it is, again, the curve and the distribution very well, you know, that you see in the middle part of the screen. Of course, uh, this patient uh, uh, has nothing that needs to uh, be treated. We will, uh, uh, you know, do also a cranial view in order to better understand, especially in cases of diffuse disease, where the uh, stenosis are, and uh, again, here it is. Okay, you see some small branches that distribute for the uh, prostate, which is uh, uh, slightly uh, underneath the bladder, and then at the end uh, you see the uh, pudendal artery with the common and dorsalis penis uh, uh, bifurcation. Now we will do <coughs> CO2 angiography, as promised, to evaluate the uh, cavernous health system. We are connecting the system. And uh, here it is. Uh, Guido, can I have the slide again one second? I want to show you to India Live uh, friends. Uh, the CO2 angiography. No, go back one slide. Okay, you see, uh, manual injection. We at the beginning of our experience, we were doing manual injection, uh, but of course, first of all, it's not safe. It, we cannot give a consistent pressure, and uh, of course, we have a lot of radiation exposure since we have to be very close to the patient. With automatic injection, uh, there is a machine that is depicted in uh, uh, that slide. Uh, you have a very consistent pressure. We inject at uh, uh, 300 uh, dpi and uh, uh, 80 uh, CO2 as a volume. And uh, this uh, makes uh, very reproducible uh, any examination. Uh, now you have to purge the system, Lorenzo, possiamo fare lo spurgo? And uh, we again move in this projection, okay, vai. 
okay, we start the injection and uh, you will see the CO2 gas moving. Here it is, the pudendal artery. Don't move, don't move. Uh, we're, not, we're not seeing the fluoroscopy. Ah, okay. Now we are. Okay, if you can see it, the pudendal artery appears uh, here on the left and distribute in the middle part you see a small distribution of CO2 again due to the fact that the viscosity uh, it's much less as you have seen by contrast you cannot appreciate the cavernous injection but what is important is that this distribution is not normal at all uh, due to the fact that we should have seen a complete staining of all the cavernous body uh, for the entire segment, so for the uh, entire uh, organ, genital organ, while we see only, you know, a very small distribution uh, at the base of the penis, but as you see, along uh, the penis, uh, there is no distribution. So. Uh, we agree uh, with the uh, urologist that probably this is uh, a fibrosis of the corpora cavernosa. Uh, this piece of information is uh, uh, quite important due to the fact that the patient does not respond anymore to PDF inhibitors. Uh, you have a uh, you know, uh, diagnosis, a clear diagnosis of uh, uh, fibrosis. And third, the only solution that we have in this type of patients is to do a penile implantation. Uh, due to the fact that uh, when there is fibrosis of the corpora cavernosa, you know, it's like the microcirculation in myocardial infarction is gone. And of course, you can also expect that the penile implantation could be a more difficult procedure due to the fact that the corpora cavernosa are quite stiff and so for the urologist to enter with the surgical instrument will be more difficult than with uh, uh, I would say healthy corpora cavernosa uh, uh, procedure. Now having said that uh, I, what I would like uh, to show you is uh, uh, you know our cases that we did uh, this week just to give you the idea of uh, what we have in case of uh, atherosclerotic disease of the uh, pudendal artery. Uh, Vincenzo, may I have uh, the uh, video uh, that uh, we recorded uh, and, uh, and uh, as you will see, uh, with Diego, can uh, we have also the slide? In case of uh, uh, atherosclerotic disease, uh, what we uh, utilize is, uh, as I told you, drug eluding balloon. Uh, and uh, I, I don't have, uh, here it is, uh, which the only drug eluding balloon that we are utilizing now in our cat lab is a magic touch which is uh, unique due to the fact that it is a sirolimus delivery uh, due uh, very you know nice engineering work has been done uh, the sirolimus uh, it's converted into submicron sized particles with encapsulation of uh, sirolimus in uh, carrier which is represented by phospholipids and then uh, this carrier and drugs are transferred into the vessel wall for drug retention. Uh, again, uh, if I can have the other slide. Uh, okay, this is uh, the case that uh, we have treated uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, you can clearly see here uh, uh, diffuse uh, disease of the uh, pudendal artery, here it is. Uh, you can clearly see uh, almost 90% stenosis of the pudendal artery, but very long segment. Uh, if we go to the next frame, <coughs> uh, 
you can see and appreciate a little bit better uh, here in another projection. Next frame. Okay, we are entering with uh, 0 0.014 wire. Avanti. 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 Okay, we are selecting with a guiding catheter. Avanti. Okay, here it is. You can clearly see the diffuse disease of the uh, pudendal artery district. We are almost at the base of the pain with the tip of the uh, um, wire. Avanti. Uh, of course, in these cases, what we do usually, we treat the most uh, severe segment with a drug eluding stent. In uh, this case, was a, a 2.5 uh, stent. And then we move, here it is, and then we move with the drug eluding balloon uh, after uh, predilatation uh, to treat the other segments. And you can clearly see that above the stent, uh, okay, this is the uh, predilatation, and then we go with the drug eluding balloon, uh, prossima, diapositiva. Okay, uh, now we're gonna treat the distal part. Again, you, you can clearly see the disease in the distal segment. Uh, prossima. Prossima. Uh, okay, probably this is the last one that the balloon was not recorded, but this is the result that we get after uh, uh, drug eluding uh, uh, balloon implantation. Uh, and the drug eluding stent treatment of the, these uh, uh, segments. Uh, and uh, so what uh, for screening, what is important for you as a, a key uh, message and take on message is that the CO2 angiography uh, can be uh, done, of course, in patients with renal insufficiency, but it's not uh, uh, this case. But in uh, the pudendal artery disease, in order to uh, evaluate the response of the uh, cavernous body to CO2 uh, injection. Uh, second, uh, if uh, there, there are stenosis, atherosclerotic disease, these are usually atherosclerotic plaque, like in the coronary artery. Uh, there was a Portuguese study uh, demonstrating that we can have a type 5A and 5B of the American Heart Association study classification, so complex plaque in uh, this district. And you can treat uh, uh, with uh, second line therapy with the uh, drug eluding stent and of course uh, drug eluding balloon. In our case, we utilize uh, a Sirolimus coating the balloon. Uh, I don't know if uh, you have questions from the audience or from the panel. Uh, that case you showed us, uh, you did the right side. Was the left side normal? The and would you do bilateral angioplasty anytime? Uh, no, what we usually do, uh, you, you have to keep in mind that uh, there is also uh, an important psychological component in uh, these patients. And we treat them like, you know, breast cancer. If they have to do a double implantation, they will first do the left breast and then the second breast. And uh, we do the same. So we do a diagnostic, complete diagnostic angiography. Then we treat the most severe uh, uh, side and stenosis, then we wait three, four months, and then we bring the patient back if he still has symptoms, because most of the time the patient responds very well. They withdraw completely the PDA5 inhibitors, and so we wait to treat the second uh, side. And the antiplatelet therapy for such procedures, would it be similar to coronary procedures? It, if we treat the patient only with drug eluding balloon, we give a dual antiplatelet therapy uh, for uh, uh, three months. Uh, and then uh, on aspirin, it will continue on aspirin. If we have a drug eluding stent, the size is similar to the coronary, and uh, we give them uh, six months uh, dual antiplatelet therapy and then aspirin alone. Um, that 
is a fantastic disposition. Uh, just a question, you know, you proceeded with an angiogram and then discovered that this patient had fibrosis of the corpora cavernosa. Is it possible to diagnose that condition prior to doing an angiography because after all it's an invasive procedure? So would a direct injection into the corpora cavernosa showing that this is going to be a fibrotic uh, cavernosa which means obviously there's going to be no possibility of any intervention. Is that possible? Uh, this is a very good question. I mean uh, we are talking about uh, pioneering uh, applications of CO2 angiography. We are the only center in the world that has started to do CO2 angiography geography in the pudendal artery district we never try honestly speaking to do a direct cavernous injection we perform routinely ct scan and geography with cavernosography for venous disease uh, due to the fact that you have to uh, evaluate the anatomy of the venous plexus in order to do embolization uh, if uh, the patient has uh, prevalently uh, venous uh, disease. We never inject CO2 directly into the uh, cavernous uh, tissue. It's a good idea. We will, uh, we will try during a cavernosography to, to see what, uh, what we have. But keep in mind that usually this patient that comes with the positive Doppler, uh, you know, we don't routinely perform CT and geography. I will recommend it to do it at the beginning to get orientation due to the fact that uh, the anatomy is quite complex in uh, uh, several cases. So uh, CT Angio will help the operator to get oriented in this difficult anatomy. Uh, we bring the patient immediately in the cat lab. It's faster for us to do a diagnostic angio, CO2 angio, and if we have a stenosis, we treat them uh, immediately. Okay, uh, Dr. Gusep, thank you so much for that uh, very excellent uh, description of how you evaluate and treat these patients. And um, most of us are quite uh, unfamiliar with in this territory, and you have given us a very lucid uh, and step-by-step, -step, uh, you know, introduction to this topic for us. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Nasta. Namaste. Namaste. Fantastic. Okay.